and you're watching Back at Home. Thank you for joining me again. Today we continue to talk about the king of ragtime, Scott Joplin. In the previous episode, I told you a little bit about maple leaf rag, which became Joplin's most celebrated rag, having sold more than half a million copies in sheet music in just a few years since its first publication. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit more about The Entertainer. The Entertainer was published in 1902 as sheet music and subsequently appeared as a piano roll in 1910. By then, Joplin had already been experienced with the genre, having made a ragtime all the rage a few years back in 1893 at the Chicago World Fair. He, together with the quartet he formed, the Texas Medley Quartet, went to Chicago to perform ragtimes at the fair, or rather around the fair, because as musicians of color, they were not allowed into the main space. However, Joplin and his companions built quite a following performing in the venues surrounding the main fair site. But the true breakthrough for Scott Joplin and the entertainer came in 1973, posthumously for Scott Joplin, with the release of an Oscar-winning movie The Sting, starring Paul Newman and Robert Gladford. The soundtrack of this movie features the entertainer. Awards and honors follow. In 1976, Columbia University awarded the Pulitzer Prize to Scott Joplin for his rags, and in 1983, Joplin's face appeared on the US postage stamp. Last time I talked about the syncopated, ragged rhythms that make the ragtime so very recognizable. Today I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the tempo. Joplin was very adamant about the tempo of his rags, which he always asked not to be played too fast. The maple leaf rag tempo indication reads tempo di marcia the speed of a march, which invites little but maybe some interpretation. With the entertainer, there are no two ways about the tempo. Joplin writes simply not fast. And you'll be interested to know that in Joplin's yet other ragtime called the Non Pareil, the composer writes, do not play this piece fast. It is never right to play ragtime fast, even though it is very easy to get carried away and play these syncopated rhythms at a lightning speed. We must remember Joplin's words and abide by his tempo indications. I told you last time that Joplin told his then student, Arthur Marshall, that the maple leaf rag would make him the king of ragtime, a prophecy that was fulfilled. Before I invite you to enjoy the entertainer and my rendition of it, I would like to share the words of Joplin's former student, Samuel Brunson Campbell, who said, Joplin set in motion a genre of music that blew the lid off the musical world and set it into the greatest musical craze that the world has ever known.
thank you as always for joining me. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel where you will find many more performances and discussions of various music on the Back at Home playlist. For now, please take care and stay well. Thank you.